Hello once again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 999. Think of that. The next one will be number 1000 plus all of the other videos I have, maybe a five or 600 other ones, so check those out. I'm almost at a milestone here, but it's part six of a long series that I've been making. I've been working on it for two weeks regarding the Atlas number 618 lathe. That's just a six inch mini lathe, but there's many of them out there, same as the Craftsman. So I pretty much took this whole thing apart and cleaned everything and tuned it up and everything, reassembled it. So watch those videos. But what I'm going to do in this, as promised, I'm going to take the three jaw chuck apart. I'm de-rusting it. It's in terrible, terrible shape. The four jaw was done earlier, but it, it wasn't very bad. But the, the uh, three jaw universal scroll chuck is pretty darn rough, and I hope that I can salvage it because it's a very strange thread. Number uh, one inch, eight threads per inch. It's, it's real coarse thread compared to some of the machines that I have looked at and studied. Well, the chuck has been fermenting here in the industrial, it's industrial rust eliminator. It is not uh, evaporous, very similar though. So I don't like working with the gloves, but they're just a horrible black substance when you pull the, <laughs> the items out of the stew, the gravy. My mom always taught me to put newspapers down, did yours? And some place in here are the jaws. So I'll get these parts blown off and uh, ready to take apart. Be right back. Okay, the jaws are wiped off a little bit and I've already loosened these four cap screws and they were quite tight. So I'll remove them right now. Now this chuck has a dividing line, parting line. Can you see it right there? Now if there were three of these instead of one, I would put an index mark on there someplace, but there's really only one way to reassemble this, so I do not need to worry about that. So let me take the screws out and see if we can get it apart. It probably will not be easy. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to open this up, so I put the screws back in with just a little bit sticking out, and I don't know. That was too easy. I'm not used to things being easy. And now with the screws out, pretty dirty inside. So we got two halves, and now I wonder if the scroll itself will come out. Again, that's too easy. Well, not that easy. Okay, here's the scroll with the bevel gear on the back. And that's what makes these uh, chucks so expensive. This, this part must be terribly difficult to machine. All right, there's a lot of grease on this. So I'm going to have to degrease really everything because the grease is on the inside now. So I will soak that in solvent, and while, I'm, while that is uh, happening, I think I'll take the jaws over to the abrasive paper and give it a number like that and see what happens. Okay, the parts are soaking in solvent. This is not the rust eliminator. That's in another container here. So I'll let that stew for a while while I work on the jaws. This is 240 cloth. I never heard of 240. It's usually 220. How crazy is that? All right, so the whole idea is here, I'm going to dress up the jaws in this manner. Now again, if there's pitting and staining, it will never come out. So I'm not worried about that. You certainly wouldn't want to surface grind these and clean them up because you, they need to be the right thickness. So I'll give this some uh, off-camera treatment and get right back to you. Well, all the parts have been put through the rust remover and the solvent, so they're, they're nice and clean. I've wiped them off, I've blown them off. However, I have not polished yet, so we still got that very dull finish on there. 
And I will partially assemble this and then put this on the lathe to polish the periphery. But the flat parts here, I'll polish over there as I did the jaws. And I, I think I won't show that. There's really nothing to do on this. I did clean this out very thoroughly. Again, that's the scroll. That's why we sometimes call it a scroll chuck. Okay, all the parts are thoroughly clean. I'm about ready for assembly here. Remember, the periphery will be sanded on the lathe itself. Now, that's really as good as I can get it. A lot of staining, but yet it's true and flat and semi-smooth, so it's good enough. And the good news is this is a Buck Chuck, a major brand, if you're not familiar with it. Not sure if they still make them, but it is a Buck. All right, as I assemble it, I'm going to use uh, just 20 weight oil, but on the actual gear, and maybe in here, I believe I'm going to use grease. The reason for that is I have taken fairly new chucks apart from the time to time, and there is grease inside them. Also, the grease has less of a tendency to get slung out by centrifugal force. For those of you that do not know, this is the scroll. And you can see how the, uh, the teeth are arranged. So you can't put these in backwards. You need a separate set of jaws. And the, these have been long lost. So I only have these jaws, which are the best ones anyway. And remember the jaws are numbered one, two, three, as is the chuck itself. Yeah, there's, a, there's the numbers. And you must assemble it with the correct jaw in the correct slot. Absolutely essential. And as you assemble this, here is the beginning of the thread. So when number, where's number one? This is number one. So initially, the position would be like this, and I would put the jaw in, and it would catch the first one, see? And then as we came around to number two, it would get caught in the thread, and so on. With that, That's very important. But you probably knew that. Okay, it's assembly time, and I'll take just a little bit of oil. And then, remember, this the scroll part is going to go like this. So, Boy, that's quite a fit. Real nice fit, and it turns smoothly. So we'll put a little grease here on the gear. Now this, of course, is where the chuck key goes, so we'll just put a dab of grease on that, although it'll pick up the grease from this. And that goes into this hole, like so. And this will match up with this, and I better get a little bit of oil in here. Do never assemble anything dry. Bad, bad move. Wow. Looking good, and I'll go ahead and put these three cap screws in off camera. Okay, for the final sanding out here, I'm going to mount the chuck on the spindle, but I really don't want the abrasive particles to get into the scroll, so that's why I stuff paper in there. Now, maybe it'll fly out with centrifugal force, I don't know, but... This is the whole idea. Look at the black matter coming off. So this will take a little while. And of course a fella could sand the ends too, but I really have done that already. So I'm just going to spend some time with abrasives like this. And I'll get back to you and we'll install the jaws. That worked quite well. And I believe the paper kept the <laughs> abrasive particles out of the scroll. However, 
I should have covered the waves because I can feel the grit down here on the bed. So I'll, I'll wipe that right now with solvent and get that grit off. That's a, a terrible thing to have on the bed or the ways of a lathe. Okay, I've numbered the slots here so they show up for you. One, two, three, four. And remember, this is number one, two, and three. So they have to go in in that order. But I'd like to put just a drop of oil in there although it's been done before. And then with each jaw, I would like a little oil in this slot. So I'll do that to all three. All right, watch slot one now as I turn the screw. See the end of it? So I want it in that position as I insert number one jaw. Number one, and I'll push it in like this as hard as I can as I so it'll catch the first time and you'll see it move right away did you see that now I'm bringing the thread around so I can see it here in number two and similarly I like that word I had a teacher that would use that all the time similarly boys did you see it catch and finally number three has to be clean and you should take your chucks apart from time to time and clean them. And if you've done it correctly, I'm bringing the jaws up so they're about even here. Now if I close it all the way, the jaws should meet simultaneously, but rather than do that, if they're all even right here, then you know you've put them in correctly and you haven't gone one revolution too far. The kids would do that at school. That one jaw would just be way out of place. Then you got to take it apart again. All right. This three jaw chuck is done. I hope you learned something that you can use in your shop. There's the four jaw. One other thing I wanted to say. Some of these chucks that you got on the Atlas Lays are nice and thin right here so they don't stick out too far as opposed even to this one so a lot of chucks that have a backing plate although this isn't a backing plate the, the chuck ends up being quite long and you lack rigidity just hangs over too much so I like these compact ones just a point of interest on this 618 lathe is that the holes in the spindle is quite small. This is half inch stock, so really half inch is the largest that you can insert all the way through the spindle. And so there's half inch stock. Tighten it up nicely. See if it runs fairly true. Well, it's hard to tell, but in the next video, I'm going to uh, put a piece of test stock in there and we'll check it with an indicator because this chuck's probably only within two or three or four thousandths. I will also check the tail stock alignment and take a few cuts and that will all be in tips number 1000, a milestone video, a, uh, <laughs> the golden video. Well, I'm very satisfied with the way the chuck turned out because if you look back at the beginning of the video, you'll see how rusty and how bad it looked, almost like it should be thrown away. But I think I've got a perfectly serviceable chuck now to use on this little machine. So thank you for watching Tips 999. Please give me a thumbs up or leave a comment. You don't have to do anything in a comment except... Uh, Put a smiley face or something like that. I know it's hard to do for those of you that are watching this on your phone, but it will help uh, stimulate the videos, I think, if you, if you do that for me. Since there's no charge for these videos, you know, other than you have to sit through a couple commercials, I think. So this is number six, part six on this machine. There will definitely be, as I said, be a part seven, and I really don't know after that but there will be a playlist on that so you can watch all of them if you have that kind of endurance so it's mr pete saying so long for now and this has been about a two-week project in all but very enjoyable for me albeit a bit dirty see you next time